Hello everyone and welcome to Historical Notes, an educational series on music history and cultural studies. To everyone I've told about the show, welcome, and to those of you who have no idea what's going on, we're glad to have you here. So without further ado, let's get right into, uh, yes, uh, sorry, you in the back with your hand up, um, what's your name? Uh, hi, yes, I'm uh, the audience surrogate. Um, I thought you said this was like a music history thing. Yeah, it is. So, uh, what's this? Ah, uh, right. Why am I starting with methodology? I should clarify. One of the main reasons I am doing this series is because I want to make music education more accessible. And no, I'm not just talking about notes and chords and sheet music. We'll get into why that is later. I'm talking about the study of what music means to us, why people make the music they do, where do these music practices come from. There is a ton of academic writing on the subject, but people who don't have access to a college education are locked out of the conversation. Yeah, that still doesn't answer my question. I'm getting there, audience surrogate. There are certain academic practices that I think are valuable, but oftentimes the language scholars use is so complicated that no one outside of their field of study can understand them. So I'm going to do my best to break down exactly what I'm doing and how and why I'm doing it as clearly as possible, because I personally believe that clarifying my methodology and theoretical framework is the intellectually honest thing to do. Huh? Exactly. In this video, we are going to learn what each of these terms mean, why they are important, and what my plan is for the series. So buckle up, friends, we're getting intellectual. Let's start with the obvious question. What is methodology? Well, to answer that question, I will be turning to academic literature, specifically... Hello, friends. This is Editing Ray coming to you from the future. So it turns out the source that I was initially going to use is unpublished and therefore it is not considered fair use for me to cite it. So I have had to cut out the initial recording of my discussion of the definition of methodology and replace it with this. Hopefully this will not become a recurring segment, but we shall see. So instead, I will be turning to sociologydictionary.org. This definition of methodology is a system or theory of how research proceeds, including considerations for ethics, methods, participants, and researchers. So, things to highlight here are the fact that methodology and method are actually different things. Methodology consists of multiple methods. Citing academic sources, for instance, is one method that I will be using, but that is not my entire methodology. Other things that I will be doing include talking to other people who are performers or audience members when possible, conducting musical analysis, and also referencing my own experience with music. Another important thing to point out here is that methodology is not just about the actual methods you use, it also has to do with how you think about your research. It contains an ethical component as well, which is something that we will get into once I start talking about my theoretical framework and intellectual honesty as a concept. In other words, the way that I think about music is going to influence how I go about studying it. My methodology for this series is going to be heavily influenced by ethnomusicology. I am planning to do a video dedicated to ethnomusicology later on, where I will explain in more detail what it is, but for now, all you need to know is ethnomusicology is all about studying music in its cultural context. Therefore, I will be referencing first-hand accounts wherever possible, so I can get a better understanding of how people within the musical communities I am studying engage with that music, and I will be adding historical and cultural context to every piece of music I discuss. The reason why I am choosing to do things this way has a lot to do with my own values 
and is heavily influenced by the theoretical frameworks which I will be using in this series. Speaking of which, let's talk about theoretical framework. Once more, I am turning to academic texts for this definition. This one comes from the University of Southern California's library website. The quote itself is from The Meaning of Theory by sociologist Gabriel Abend. Quote, Theories are formulated to explain, predict, and understand phenomena, and, in many cases, to challenge and extend existing knowledge within the limits of critical bounding assumptions. The theoretical framework is the structure that can hold or support a theory of a research study. The theoretical framework introduces and describes the theory that explains why the research problem under study exists. In other words, the theoretical framework is the set of ideas that guide your research. Your theoretical framework determines what questions you want to answer and which conclusions you make after gathering your data. If methodology is how you are answering your research questions, theoretical framework is what you are asking and why. I will be using different theoretical frameworks depending on the topic I'm exploring in a given video. Frameworks like Black Feminism, the Social Model of Disability, and Postcolonial Theory. I will be explaining in greater detail what each of these theories mean as they come up, but the main ideas will be influencing my methods throughout this series. For instance, I will be prioritizing sources created by people from the cultures I am talking about over sources created by people outside of those cultures. So if I am talking about disabled LGBTQIA plus musicians, I will be citing sources created by disabled LGBTQIA plus people. Also, I am going to try to make my videos as accessible as possible for people with different sensory needs by including content warnings, subtitles, and verbal descriptions of what is happening on screen. Like I mentioned before, my methodology is influenced by these theoretical frameworks because I personally believe that your methods and your intentions have to align in order to conduct research ethically. Which brings us to our last topic, intellectual honesty. This definition comes to us from Louis M. Ganin, lecturer on ethics and science at Harvard Medical School. Quote, Intellectual honesty consists in a disposition of an agent such that when presented with an incentive to deceive in any way, the agent will not deceive. The alternative is intellectual dishonesty, a disposition to mislead when talking seriously. Intellectual honesty assures that forthrightness dominates, delivering candor when it counts. Since this is a very nuanced definition, let's take a moment to unpack it. Notice that Louis M. Guinea never uses the word truth in this definition. Intellectual honesty assures that forthrightness dominates, not truth. This is an extremely important distinction because intellectual honesty is not about being right all the time. Intellectual honesty is about being direct. It means presenting your knowledge as clearly as possible and explaining why you think that way. Your knowledge can be false, that does not mean you are intellectually dishonest, if you earnestly believe the things you say, and you are transparent about how you came to that conclusion. This is why I am taking so much time in this video to walk you through my thought process for this series, because I believe launching into a discussion of music history as if I am an expert on the topic without clarifying my process or giving you the tools to check my work is an intellectually dishonest thing to do. So I will be clarifying my theoretical framework and methodology at the beginning of every video and including citations in the video itself and in the description box below because the whole point of this series is to get people to think critically about music. And with that, friends, we have come to the end of this long-winded but important intro to this series. Thank you so much for sticking around, and tune in next month for our first proper topic, What is Western Art Music?